students of very, 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 very wide range of um, social, economic background. And, but what, they, what it is, though, is that they support each other in the different endeavors. And one of the things that, you know, like I said, my thing is that I, I'm into technology and I love technology. And what's really interesting, what's really exciting about technology nowadays is that, you know, when I was growing up back in the day, when I was young, you know, you would just take your little camera out and you would videotape yourself or whatever. And, you know, you would have to um, actually mail it to someone <laughs> or whatever to be able to share your, who you are, what you're all about. Uh, but now, now with the way social media is, and also the way we have all the, the, the innovative technologies and innovative ways of being able to reach people, you know, you could do a lot of this stuff on your own, by yourself, and express yourself in any way you, you want to. In other words, technology is allowing people to have a voice. You know, we always talk about the, the people, you know, the voiceless, the people that cannot be heard. But technology allows you to, allows anybody to have the voice. And that's, that's really what the power of all this, and that's really what some of the things that I do with the students that I work with, is that, you know what, the most important thing is, to tell you the truth, is trying to find your voice. You know, the first couple meetings that we have, the first couple meetings that we talk about and we share are basically, who are you? What are you? What you represent? And that actually goes back to, and I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't have, have you, let you have access to my LinkedIn account yet. I just didn't um, have time, so I was running around today. But that's part of your voice, LinkedIn. Who are you? How do you express yourself? You could, you could have express yourself in a very, very positive way on LinkedIn and on these social media and all this thing, or you could express yourself in a very negative way. But it's in your control. And you can also express the environment around you too. And that's really what um, I'm working with the, the students now, is, like I say, is that, you know, what does it mean to be a and name Brothers of Unity? You know, that, that could have a lot of different meanings, a lot of different things, but instead of me pushing down on them what that definition is, I'm allowing them to come up with that definition. And we're providing them with 360 cameras and they're going to go out and just basically capture and work on defining who they are. But but also though, like I say, now they're utilizing media that, you know, a 360 camera back in the day for me was you had to take 25 pictures going around the circle. Now you have 360, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but now this is an innovation that is really um, exciting, exciting to be a part of, an exciting you know technology. When you're talking about 360, you're talking about the virtual reality augmented reality, um, you know, all, all this, all these different things all together um, are allowing, like I say, allowing people to have a voice. And if you understand how to use a lot of this technology, to be honest with you, you even have a louder voice and a bigger voice. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So, so one of the things that we were just thinking about as, as a collaboration was that, you know, I think it would be exciting that for the students over here to work with you guys, and like I say, we have this 360 video technology to maybe capture things for you. We can edit and work together and just try to figure out how we can express ourselves, you know? And what's what's exciting is that, you know, this is a East Coast, West Coast collaboration, which could be exciting. And, and just because of that point right there, you know, uh, um, like a lot of the students that I've worked with, I'm working with, they've barely been out of the state of North Carolina, where we are. And it's just exciting to be able to see, wow, there's more to this out there. This, the world is bigger, bigger but yet smaller than what they believe. So, so that's what, you know, we're just throwing out ideas and just trying to think about how we could potentially uh, just collaborate and just, just work together. Now there's gonna be time zone issues and things like that, but you know, if you have a if you have a dream and you have a a, a, a want, we could we could accomplish things. It's one of the things that I, that I'd love to do is um, we should set up the Google Drive for the class so we have a repository uh, for content, 
and I think right. that may be the immediate space for collaboration. We're using a Google document now to document the class as we go through it. Um, also, it'd be good to get an idea of the equipment that's being used. So, you know, I would love to see if we get a 3D, 3D whatever 3D camera you guys are using, would love to replicate that. And then what editing software are you using to edit 360 video footage? Um, we were actually by, um, we were partnering working with um, Mike over at NC State, and he recommended us using um, uh, Adobe Premiere. So Premiere uh, 360? Yes. Yep. 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 So we yep. have, uh, so, how many of you guys are Premiere certified? Anybody? I have it. How many of you guys know how to use it, even if you're not certified? Yeah. All right. <laughs> we have willing people who know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but I think that would be the the, 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 the the next thing to look at would be the editing process for 360 video in Premiere and then understanding maybe, um, I know Michael's going to have the class, it's here on the 20th, uh, or his, or Dennis. I guess Derek, his Derek, Derek, Derek Allen Rowe. Derek. And so I guess the, the class here who goes to that field trip will at least see how to shoot uh, yes. 360 and have some of those mm -hmm. tips. So it may make sense, one, uh, to... If you could share any kind of footage or anything you have on, just, just here's the scope of the project, right? Here's the camera exactly. you're using, here's the process we're thinking about using. We'll post that, maybe we can discuss that next week. And then you guys will have a lesson on that on the 20th. So and that's right before you guys go on the trip. It'd be great then to, to sort of figure out, okay, great, you guys are And then that comes back after spring break. So it looks like to me something that coming back to spring break, you'll have footage We'll have learned a little bit about 360 filmmaking. Um, mm -hmm. We'll come together to come up with a piece or pieces uh, or different ideas, you know, again, looking at different takes of how we can represent this to collaborate on. Oh, sounds, sounds excellent. Sounds excellent. Yeah, we're, we're basically, and, and this is what's good about this, is that we're basically walking down the street together. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're in the process of learning, developing, defining our environment and things like that, too. And that is actually one of the... Um, we just, we just purchased some of the, the GoPro cameras, and we have them in-house now, and uh, next week we're actually going to be unboxing them, going through the process of just learning how to use them, just stepping outside the, the school and just saying, hey, what do we have here? You so know, it's and, GoPro and, and 360 that you're using? Yes, 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 yes. The, um, the GoPro, I'll, I'll get you the exact models and everything, but I will, I will basically define or, or show you and provide you the, our entire environment that we're going to be using and we're planning on using for um, all of our editing and for the capture and all that kind of um, stuff. And then ultimately on our, in our, our perspective, what we're actually working towards is on uh, May 12th, uh, we're actually going to have a, what we call it, we're going to call it a, it's called the next showcase. And the reason why we named it next or, or we coined the term next is because it's going to highlight the, um, the, the next, technology that's out there, and that's where we're talking about VR, 360, things like that for communication. But it also, we're going to have our students, and they're going to actually partner with other um, groups within the um, high school to actually put together what we call creator, facilitators, and ambassadors program. In other words, instead of just being consumers, we are going, we're going to show that we are the next creators facilitators and ambassadors of technology. Mm. So we're going to show that this is the direction that we're heading. This is, this is the things we're going to do. What would be really cool that we could just talk a little bit about this collaboration that we're doing here. You know, that's, that's what's next. Next, we, 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 we are basically, because of this collaboration here, potentially, we could actually say that the next generation or the next people using this tech, we're tearing down those walls. You know, we're not just working here in the state here. We're working with people. We can work with people all over the country to create, to be creators, to be facilitators, to be ambassadors of technology. So we have a lot of things that we can do. We have a lot of things. So I really like the idea. We'll just share our environments with each other, and then that'll be the first step, and let us know what we're doing, and then we can go from there. Terrence, That's great. And Terrence, uh, I want to open up for questions. Yeah, Terrence, I just want to give a little context and background as to how we met Darren. Um, I attended a AT&T Development Lab workshop about two months ago at El Segundo, where we we're going to be visiting on March 20th, and met one of Darren's um, close friends named Mike Wallace, who was the instructor. And at that lab, they broke down all the myths 
all the things that people were wondering about on how to take immersive media serious enough to be storytellers as well as leaders in how to use the technology to gain some kind of foothold on where this is going because there's a lot of a lot of bifurcation a lot of people trying to figure out how to make it work and how to make money but at this workshop they broke down a lot of those myths and talked a lot about forecast where we could go as storytellers so we're really getting some of AT&T's best instruction and design on where immersive media is going. So we'll be able to have that kind of coverage for everything we do in collaboration with Darren. Mike Koalas and the person that we're going to be meeting on March 20th, I met his name is Derek Allen Rowe. They're some of the subject matter experts on immersive media. So 2D filmmaking, which you guys have learned, meets 3D to 4D is what we're going to be experts in it when we finish this thing. Okay? Yeah. Um, do you guys have any questions for, uh, for Darren before we let him go? Any thoughts? No, I, I think um, one of the things that I, that I like to do is uh, once we get that environment, then the goal would be to mirror that, right? So I'd love to, if it's not the next class, the following class, uh, have whatever camera we're talking about here in the classroom, uh, have, you know, premiere up, maybe have you guys, because uh, really this last hour of the class is really set to be a time where we uh, sort of experiment, right, lab, look at some content, look at some ideas. So um, that would be the idea of a format for the next time we come together, is I uh, have maybe one of these PCs set up with premiere, have the camera here, a couple of them so that you guys can do it, maybe have people walk <laughs> out, do a couple of little videos, figure out how to edit it, but I think it's important for you guys to get your hands on the technology. Because um, I don't know. Well, okay. So, Darren, question for you. Sure. Any idea of the advantage of what 360 brings to the subject matter that you guys have thought about so far, or is that, or is that where we are right now? Is how, what, what is the advantage? You know, it, it, it's it's um it, it, it brings a um that, that's a very good question, and we talk about. It. One of the things that it brings, it, first of all, it brings a wow effect, and it draws people in, okay? And that, that's, that's step one. But also, it, it really, if it's done properly, and with a very good narrative of story and everything around it, that's the whole point of being immersed in it, is that if it's done properly, you can actually take that person into the, your world and really bring them directly into your world. You know, and, and that, that's, really the, that's really the secret of it all now, and that's really the whole concept when we're talking about immersive technology, that's the difference between, you know, just a pure non-immersive and immersive technology. Immersive technology has you, I mean, it, it, the only way you can get even more immersive if you're walking down the side of a river is that somebody's squirting water on you while you're walking next to it. You know what I mean? That's, right, right. That, that's really some of the things that really you want to be able to immerse, to be able to experience it. And it's, it gets you closer to that point. And what we're finding, especially here in the Chapel Hill Carver City School District, is that you know, we actually are, are talking about, just to let you know about immersive technology, we're actually talking about that when kids go on field trips, we actually are thinking about having a pool of 360 cameras available so that students can actually film their field trip, bring it back, and then we will have a, lo a repository, basically, of a location on the server where kids who are unable to attend or let's say somebody who's really looking to um, experience that, have that experience, can can actually view it also. So it's almost like it's almost like the same thing as, you know, if if I if you if you were visiting Chapel Hill mm -hmm. and the University of North Carolina, I could provide you with 20 pictures of University of North Carolina, or I could take you on a video tour of University of North Carolina. Or I could take you on an immersive 360 surround video tour of University of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And you see the difference. You can still get, but it just really it just gives you more richness to the experience. It just it just brings them, yeah, it brings more richness to the experience. Uh, I guess right. so. I think that's good. I think that and, and maybe that's part of the challenge that we look at. Uh, there. Yeah. So Terrence, I had a question. Um, this is for the group. Has anybody not been to a museum? somewhere in Southern California. If you've never been to a museum, raise your hand. So everybody's been to a museum. So one of the things we've been talking about is, 
a museum is part of the destination, part of the story that Darren's going to help us connect to. There's a museum that they're going to visit in Washington, D.C., from North Carolina. It's part of the Smithsonian models. Has anybody never heard of the Smithsonian? Raise your hand if you've never heard of the Smithsonian. Okay. Well, the Smithsonian has built a new $800 million museum on the mall for African-American history. These people that we're talking to now are going to go from North Carolina to Washington, D.C. on a field trip and bring those 360 cameras to capture everything that they can see, touch, well, not touch, see and hear <laughs> in the museum. And that's part of what I want you guys to be able to kind of understand is if you could ever remember going to a museum, how much more could you get out of the experience if you could actually have no frames, no barriers to what you saw and what you could share inside so, of a museum? Uh, I'm going to show you guys examples. Uh, so I have a really good friend who's a producer who um, worked at NBC, worked on the Olympics, and in his spare personal time, he does what he calls urban VR. And so this is a 360 tour uh, of the Toyota Commemorative Museum. And so this gives you a little bit of an understanding of what we're talking about. All right, so that's him. That's Ron. And I am now choosing what I want to look at for where he was. And this is just right now, a 360 image. So if you go now to 360 video, uh, and, and then they have the floor plan here, the location, the share, full screen. I can look at all the information here, right? So this tells you this is what it is. This gives you the panoramas involved. This now gives you exactly where it is, right? So part of the immersion is right while I'm here in this one photo, I'm getting all of the information that's available. And so you can imagine, and what I, what I want you guys to imagine is if all that information is available to you in real time, how, how do you now script a story? So imagine if I were to click on that object and I could find out Where's that object from? What year was it? Why is it important? Where is it, right? Imagine the ability to go <coughs> deep, right? To add depth. So we're adding surround. The next level is depth in any direction, right? Because right now, this is flat, right? I'm in a 2D world showing you 3D. And again, this is just a picture, right? So, so imagine that scenario in video with narration gets pretty crazy because what's happening is uh, you're, there's a narrator telling you a story, but you don't have to necessarily follow the story of the narrator. I, I, I know that this is the Moon Museum, but maybe I'm interested. There, there he is right there. Maybe I'm interested in what's behind him. What buildings are those, right? What's happening up here? Right? So this is your canvas. I can see now this hand holding the camera. So, so now this is your fulcrum point of this image that allows you to think about the story that's there. So I just wanted to give you an example of, of what we're talking about. And again, that's just photos. So, uh, how many of you guys have seen 360 ads on YouTube? So you guys have seen them? So what do you, what do you think? What's, what's, what, what, what's your, so far, what have you seen the ad for? Cool, not cool, what would you change? Not very funny, but whatever. Yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I felt like maybe we were able to move around more. Walk around or talk to the yeah. characters, you weren't mentioned that. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Anybody else? Keep that thoughts about what you've seen in the 360 video? Uh, I saw them for a car commercial. Mm -hmm. I forgot what brand it was, but I mean, the concept is like pretty cool, but I guess like 
because the thing I want to do is I'm just like laying down, so yeah. how stuff I to like, if I want to do something, I can move. So yeah, the concept is cool, but like, just like sometimes I'm not like prepared for it. So other than that, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I would. So when I've seen it, one, I didn't know it was coming. Right? So I wasn't necessarily prepared for it, and then it's, there's not there's not any instructions. Like where you, I have the whole world. I can look all around, but what am I really looking at? Right. So I think those are some of the challenges of the storytelling, because I think today it's so unique and so cool. People are doing it to do it, and I think the challenge for us is uh, how do we look at the story that this might help us to tell? And how can you enhance the story? Maybe these are some of the things that we uh, can share uh, with Darren and, and his class uh, and, and that. So uh, Darren, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, but I wanted to give a little context. That's perfect, that's perfect, because that's what we're trying, we're trying to fix that. We're working on it. Absolutely. So any other, oh, yes. Sure. Um, so she's asking if we could use drones as well. Um, so I imagine you could strap that GoPro to a drone. Let me tell you, um, it, it, a project for next year. It's funny. I, that's right on point. Here's here's what's happening. Um, Chapel Hill High School is actually being um, rebuilt. They're, they're, they're tearing down certain parts of it, certain wings and things like that. So one of the projects for next year that we're actually, or that, that we're thinking about doing is the fact that strapping a drone to the, um, I mean, I'm sorry, strapping a camera to a drone, flying it over the high school, and taking a really good shot of what the high school looks like now. Then, um, you know, I think they're going to be working on the school over the next two or three, or actually not two or three years, but over the next year, and we're going to take shots, and if there was a way but like you say, tell that story of this is the first shot, you're looking around, and all of a sudden you see part of the building going away. Then you see the new wing being built. You know what I mean? So that's that's part of that storytelling that, I mean, once again, this, these are all dreams. These are all <laughs> ideas that we throw it out. So I ain't going to lie to you. Like, it's not like, um, you know, we, we have it all figured out. But, but basically, that's some of the concepts and some of the questions, some of the ideas that a lot of these students um, are coming up with. They're like, wow, we could do a lot with this. We could do a lot, and and that's that's what's really cool about this. And, and like you say, that's the reason why you know you only you can only do so much with a picture. You can only do so much with, with you know a, a short video. Now you have 360. Now you can even incorporate some virtual reality elements and stuff too. And it's like your, the world and the ability to tell that story increases tenfold. And that's really what we're we're learning as we're we're doing it. And and that's what's exciting about all this is that. You know, I mean, like I say, Mike is a leader in all this, and we'll, we'll just be talking, and, and it's just brainstorming, and that's what that's what makes this all exciting, you know, is that more and more people you get together, more and more ideas you have, and hey, let's go out and try it. Let's just see what we can do. You know, that's, that's, that's what creating is all about. Right. Well, I think, uh, and I was just going to bring up to you guys, uh, just so you know, uh, Mike, who he's referring to, yeah. is Michael Qualis here. So, and I just pulled up uh, Mike's uh, LinkedIn. Mike, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, here, let me, uh, I'll screen share it, just so everybody knows. Just, to, just for consistency's sake. <laughs> this is Michael Qualis. So he's a uh, creative director of VR360 Video Design. He's at uh, North Carolina State University. Um, so, you know, he uh, also has quite a bit right. that he's bringing to the table. And one of the things that, that Mike is, is, is offered is studio, Lever Studio, if you can point and click on that, Terrence. For sure. So he works at the North Carolina State University, but a lot of the students that he teaches, he actually hires, puts them to work, not just giving them a W-9, but tries to essentially make sure that from gig to gig, they get a portfolio so that they could actually, again, leverage that. So leverage is the name of the studio, but he wants to leverage student work so that they can really propel themselves and get their fair market value. So he'll be working with us. He'll be, again, instructing one of the classes virtually. But, um, you know, Mike Wallace is definitely one of those guys who has the idea of how to put students in play in real time and real world with real budgets. So this is the house.
House of Swank, uh, which he has his VR 360. Right? So again, more examples. And I'll, I'll put links to uh, this uh, in the document so you guys can go back and take a look. Um, but I, I think that, that's the, the core is, you know, to look at all the opportunities. Um, you know, he's got NC State Wolfpack. The, the car commercial, see if you can just click on that one real quick. That's, that's pretty cool. He, if you can find that one. So right now, NC State football, right? None of us are going to be in the tunnel. But there, there's, the, there's the picture in the tunnel at NC State. Uh, as, as part of the, the whole piece here and down at the bottom, yeah. This right here? Yeah. And mind you guys, this is real early stuff. I mean, this is like a couple of years ago. This stuff is really crazy now. I think you have to get a, get a general idea. So, thoughts as, as you see that? I mean, so, so I guess the, the question that comes to mind is, you know, when you look at that as a storyteller, what, what do you think some of the challenges are that you're going to face? Uh, in, in having to create in that environment. Keeping Anybody? the audience, keeping the audience focused on on what your I, I mean, a piece of subject, and you got the audience looking over here, and you're, they're going to miss an important part. So, um, right. No matter right. Right. So, so what do you think? What are ways that you might imagine that you might do? What are things you might do in your creative process to help the subject know where you're telling the story? Uh, audio. Absolutely. Audio. Right? What else do you think you guys might do in that direction? Well, the audio or have uh, maybe someone in the stands or someone kind of directing them like, oh, what's going on over there? So they kind of pan to yeah. wherever the action is. So so other video cues, right? Yeah. You notice they were going from inside the car to outside the car, right? So those were different points where if they wanted to really keep you from going away from what's happening in the car, you switch to the outside shot. <laughs> Right? And, and then I think, to your point, audio cues, so somebody commentating, narration, and then, then any kind of visual cue. Um, if you think about, maybe you can highlight something, right? You could have an arrow that's letting you know there's something to the right or something to the left. Um, so these are all, that, that's the next level, right? How can you tell a story with all of those angles? And as part of the series, we've got a couple of um, immersive I'm media. Gonna, Absolutely. Thank you so much, Darren. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Darren. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to meet you, guys. Looking forward to working with you. Okay. And it's part of the camera. I can move in here. Yeah, I know. We'll figure it out. Well, that's a, that's a class challenge is how to make this more immersive. This experience that when we're talking to people, we can share not only our voices, but our faces, our reactions, and anything else, because they'll feed off our energy. Um, but as part of the series, we're bringing in a gentleman named Alton Glass. Is, is that the 16th? Um, uh, yeah, uh, 
Yes. Yeah, so this is the gentleman we met through Kevin Hart, who's doing all of Kevin Hart's immersive media. This gentleman is doing VR stuff like crazy. He's working with all the gear. But he's going to come in on the 16th and talk about, you know, what he does to make money in this space. Um, but he was an accomplished 2D filmmaker. But he wants to be one of the leaders in taking the tools and being able to show how he's going to be able to convert it into money, leverage. And so we're going to learn from him, you know, where he is in that uh, space of converting all this new technology into money on the 16th. So, uh, you know, it's, this is going to get a lot more exciting because you guys will get a chance to see some of the equipment in the hands-on. But, you know, I appreciate you guys hanging in there. I'm going to take off now. I've got a meeting uh, yeah. with some of your administrators here. But, again, thank you guys for, uh, for joining us. And, again, I hope to see you again next week and, and every following week.